Welcome to Prime Learn Online Education Solutions. On your screen is teacher Mutunzi Dennis, a teacher of primary six, taking you through mathematics. Our theme today is measures, our topic, distance, speed, and time. Our lesson title is Interpreting Travel Graphs, and our lesson number is 14. Before we continue, let's remind ourselves what you learned in lesson 13. It was about finding average speed. And we said average speed is the ratio of distance to total time taken. So in the case you didn't view the video, I advise you to visit our platform so that you catch up with today's lesson. Our lesson today is about interpreting Travel graphs. So travel graphs are also known as distance time graphs. They have two axes, that is the vertical axis, which represents distance and the horizontal axis that represents time. Travel graphs also have a title, as we shall see. So whenever you are given a question or to interpret, you need to know that on that vertical axis, there is distance. And on the horizontal axis, there is time. So let's see our first example. A graph below shows how a motorist traveled from town A to town C via town B. Study it carefully and answer questions that follow. So here is our graph. On the vertical axis, we have distance in kilometers, and the horizontal axis, we have time in hours. So my dear learner, interpreting graphs requires answering questions asked about the graph. But before you attempt questions, you need to know that the horizontal axis on a graph represents resting time. So let's see our first question. What is the scale on the vertical axis? When you look at our graph, we have a scale from 0 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 60, 60 to 80, 8 to 100, 100 to 120, 140, 160, and 180. That is the vertical scale. So they are asking the scale. Here we shall find the distance between two consecutive points. From 0 to 20, can, we can use that to find the scale, whereby we shall get 20 minus 0. And we get 20. So that is the scale between two boxes. But we need to know the scale of one box or one square, whereby we shall get our scale of 20 kilometers, we divide by two. And we get the scale for one square or one box. Therefore, we shall get 20 divided by two, and we get 10. Therefore, one square is equal to 10 kilometers. That's the scale on the vertical axis. Let's go to question number two. Question number two is, what is the scale on the horizontal axis? When we look at our graph, we see that horizontal axis represents time taken. So to find the scale, we need to get the difference between time, either from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., or we can get the difference between 10 a.m. and 9 a.m. So as long as you get to the duration between two points gives you time taken, which you can use as our scale. So here we can get 9 a.m. minus 8 a.m and we come up with one hour. That is the time between two squares or two boxes. 
but we need to get the scale of one box or one square. Here we shall get one hour divided by two. And we shall get 30 minutes or half an hour. Therefore, one square is equal to a half an hour or 30 minutes. Question three, find the motorist speed after resting. Find the motorist's speed after resting. On our graph, when you look at the motorist's journey, he traveled from zero to 60. And then from 60, we have a slanting line that shows resting. Then they're asking us the speed the motorist used from 60 kilometers to 160. Remember, we learned that speed is equal to distance over time taken. So we shall get the distance from 60 up to 160 divided by the time that that is from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Then we shall get the difference in time between 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Then we get the distance from 60 kilometers to 160. The distance between those two. Then we shall use our formula as speed is equal to distance over time. Then we shall get our distance as 160 minus 60 out of 12. That is the time at which the motorist reached town C minus the time at which the motorist left town B. That was 10 a.m. Whereby we shall get 100 as the difference in distance out of two hours, which is the difference in time. When we divide 100 by 2, we shall get 50. And I know it will be kilometers per hour since it was the setting. And thus we shall get 50 kilometers per hour as the speed of the motorist. Let's go to our next question, which is calculate the average speed of the motorist. Calculate the average speed of the motorist for the whole journey. So whenever we are calculating the average speed of the motorist for the whole journey, we need to get the total distance covered. We divide by total time taken. Whereby on distance covered, we also include the resting time because it was part of the motorist's journey. When you look at our graph, we see that the motorist started traveling from zero kilometers up to 160. So total distance covered is 160, as you can see on the vertical scale. So we get our 160 out of total time taken. We have the time taken from town A to town B. That was one and a half hours plus the resting time to 30 minutes then plus the time it took from town B to town C and those were in, those ones were two hours when you find the total time it took the sum of the total time taken will be four hours that you shall get 160 kilometers out of four hours, thus getting the speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Because when you divide 160 by four, you get 40. And the units for speed, according to the setting of the question, is in kilometers per hour. My dear learner, we have been interpreting travel graphs. And we say that before you attempt any question, you need to understand the graph. Whenever you are given a question, you need to know whether the setting has been in kilometers per hour 
or meters per second because it can be set in any of those two ways. But I think you've understood the way we've worked out those examples. Now, to prove to me that you've understood, you will do the lesson test. Thank you for viewing our videos. Our next lesson will be representing information on travel graphs. I remain Teacher Mutunzi Benz. Bye bye.